What is up? Welcome to the Fat Benji Podcast. I am your host, Benji Aflalo. It is great to be here. I'm so happy baseball season has started. I went to opening day. It was great. Everyone always asks you, exactly how Mexican is Dodger Stadium on opening day? And I would say roughly 80 to 85 thousand percent Mexican. And that's why I love it. I love Mexicans. I'm a Jewish guy from Beverly Hills. I was raised by a Mexican. Oftentimes, people are racist. And when they bring up Dodger Stadium, they're like, did you feel safe? Were you okay? Did did someone try to headbutt you? No, you're racist. You're not comfortable being surrounded by drunk Mexicans. I am comfortable being surrounded by drunk Mexicans because I go back, dude. My grandparents went to high school in Boyle Heights. You know what I'm saying? They went to Roosevelt High. I love Mexicans. I, I've been to the Santee Alley a million times. I have Jew blood in me, but in terms of Mexicans, I feel like they are our brothers, especially if you live in LA. Most of the racist people who lived in central LA, they left, and that's where Orange County comes from. That's what happened. You think Newport Beach, Orange County? That, those were literally oranges. That's why it was called Orange County. They might as well call it white blonde people county now because they left because Mexicans make them that uncomfortable. But I love the Dodgers and I love Mexicans and I love the culture and everything is great. I'm so happy baseball season is back. Even if you don't like baseball, go to a game. Go with a friend. Get drunk. Eat a hot dog. Get get sunburned. Just do it. And and I know the whole whole thing used to be that baseball's boring and other games are more exciting. That's just not the case anymore. Nobody in the NBA is playing defense. The score of the All Star game was like three hundred eighty to two hundred twelve. Nobody cares. They're just making layups for China. The NBA isn't more exciting than baseball anymore. Baseball's diverse. You 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 got Latins. You got whites. You got blacks. You got Asians. It's a great way for people to come together. One more thing I want to say. This is a harsh turn, but I've been having an issue at Equinox, and I've been having this issue for a long time. Every time they hire a new trainer at Equinox, the part of his training process, or her, I find it's usually a dude, they like just kind of walk the floor and try to offer you advice. And I'm five foot six, I'm chubby, I got a lazy eye, so those people always come up to me and are like, can I give you a thing, need a spot? I'm like, go up to the fucking meathead, dude. Go ask him. You think I care that you're making $12 an hour and and this is what they're, I don't care. Leave me alone. Stop profiling me at Equinox I don't need a personal trainer. I already have a personal trainer and I look like this. I've had personal trainers since college. You don't have any tips for me. Go back to Ohio. Stop it. Stop bothering me. I'm listening to a baseball podcast. My guest today is Carlos Herrera, my very good friend who I've known a very long time. You might know him from the Bad Friends podcast. I'm so happy he's here. One of my favorite things about this podcast so far is that I pretty much have only invited my real friends to come on. A lot of podcasts, they bullshit you and you have comedians pretending they're friends, but really they just invite famous people so they can get more followers and they do the ha-ha stuff and they do this and it's all fake because comedians are all con artists. But I'm not doing that. And granted, (laughs) the numbers aren't taken off. Maybe I should call super famous friends and nudge them, but I'd rather not. I'd rather make a good product. I'd rather be comfortable and I'd rather have my friends here. So here he is, Carlos Herrera, how you doing? Good. What's up, Benji? Not much, dude. How you doing? <laughs> I'm happy that I liked what you were saying about uh, baseball being back. And like, I w- I'm a huge NBA fan. And since 2020, I feel like the product has plummeted and it's bummed me out. My favorite player, James Harden, has gone to a bunch of teams. He always shows up chubby to every season. And I just I am excited about the Dodgers this year. I'm from Houston. But like I wasn't into like Craig Biggio and like everyone there in the '90s. They looked like 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 mean white dads. I loved the Astros growing up. I loved all baseball teams. I don't like the Astros anymore because yeah. they cheated and stuff. Yeah. But I still I still have a soft spot for Jeff Bagwell and Lance Berkman and all that stuff. I actually wore this jersey partially for you. Oh really? It's a Nolan Ryan jersey. It says oh, Ryan on see, the Oh, see, that's cool. That's cool. And I cool. know Nolan Ryan's a Houston Astros hero. Yeah, well, he's just like a Texan uh, legend in general. 
Yeah, I'm a big Nolan Ryan fan. So I was like, I'll wear my Nolan Ryan jersey. Thank you, Benji. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I so that. I thought you would actually relate more to the Equinox stuff because you're an Equinox guy. You know what? I haven't I, gone in a while. What I do is I just won't eat. Huh. Yeah, that just changed everything for me. You look great. Thank you. I appreciate you it. You used to be like kind of buff and jacked. Yeah, and then I was just like, why? I, I left Equinox during 2020 because like they had shut down the gyms in Hollywood and West Hollywood. And um, then I was like, I'll eat almonds. And then, you know, like Obama ate almonds a day kind of thing. And then I just didn't have to go back to the gym. So I thought I looked good. You're eating like a woman. Yeah, I, I do like hot girl lunches and shit like that. Like straight up Haley Bieber, Air One nonsense. Do you have fat people in your family? Uh, my dad fluctuates with weight, like John Favreau. And one of my sisters is not as skinny as the other. <laughs> Because I have so many fatties in my family, and if I, I part of the reason I do work out is because I can't control my eating. So I'm pretty much still going to Equinox to just manage my eating. That's also why I lift weights. So like I have gotten fatter. A lot of it is muscle, mm -hmm. but I think people don't realize that. But part of the reason I need to lift weights is calorically, you burn more calories when you have more muscle on your body. And then when I'm loose and drinking and eating or smoking weed and whatever's happening, like it's it's kind of makes it, if I wasn't working out or lifting weights, I'd be obese. Oh really? Yeah. Like I go to the gym every day and I'm still getting fatter. Like that's wow, what we're doing. Wow, you go with. every day? Pretty You're much. Like Polly at, e at Equinox. I'm pretty lazy in there, and I only meet with a trainer maybe every like week, every other week or so. We ho. No, I've got this really awesome trainer. His name's Kudia. He's a Kenyan dude. And he like Oh wow. And he it'll be like a two hour workout. Jesus. What he does in an hour, he'll make me do and finish. So okay. it'll be two hours and it's it's pretty serious. I what I do instead of working out is I just eat a lot of sushi too. It can be like a fun thing. You're a woman, dude. Yeah, dude. These are all the things women say. I you know what? <laughs> You're fucking right. You're like my wife. You sound like my wife. I, but I probably am as thin as your wife. If my wife dies in childbirth, we should get married. <laughs> we'll get you a blonde wig. But there is too much weight that can go away, I realized. Like, you can get to a level where girls are like, I don't want to have sex with that guy because he's too skinny. Well, that's the whole thing with dad bods and why women say they like dad bods is because they don't want to feel uglier than the guy they're fucking. I also think dad bod is just a thing that I, I feel like it's kind of a lie. Because, like, if Austin Butler walked in or, like, Channing Tatum or some handsome dude, they'd be like, okay, clearly this guy's more attractive than Jason Siegel. Okay, here's the thing. And I think you're right, it is a lie, but I think the problem with dad bod is it got misused. Mm. To me, what dad bod is supposed to mean is a guy who's jacked and strong and has a little bit of pudge. Oh, okay, okay. But then all these schleppy, pudgy, like, floppy mess guys come along they're like I got dad bod and it's like no dude dad bod is a guy who was jacked for a role or knows how to get jacked for roles yeah. and then he hasn't worked in six months and now he's a little fat but he's still kind of jacked yeah like Captain America a month after the movie comes out he's like I'm gonna eat burgers now yes yes I yeah, that's so fucking funny. I didn't realize it got misused. Yeah, originally that's I'm so what it mad meant. right now. Yeah, that's what I always thought it meant. It meant that you had dad strength and you were strong, but you've been busy helping with the kids and going to work and you can't get to the gym all the time now. So now you're like a little pudgy, but you're, you're still like a fucking man. Yeah, you need to be a dad too. You can't have dad bod as a single dude. Yeah, like it's just a called lot creep. Of these, yeah, all these single dudes that like have a little bit of a belly because they're 33 now. Or whatever, like, you can't just be like, I have dad bought. It's like, dude, you don't even own a car. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, there's nothing dad about you. No, absolutely not. All right, bud, let's get into the fucking news. Since we um, talked about baseball, I want to start with baseball. Um, as many of you know, there's a Shohei Otani gambling thing going on, and I'm very irritated by it. I don't know if he's gambling. I don't know if it was the translator and this and that. The issue I'm having with it is the haters. And there's this thing that often happens with the Dodgers or Asian people or in general where you get to come at us, not us Asians, but us Dodger fans, and it's okay. So recently, AJ Perzinski, who uh, used to be a catcher on the White Sox, he had this podcast where he came out and he goes, first of all, I want to give the benefit of the doubt to Shohei because he's an incredible talent. 
but I just don't know how you can have multiple large deposits taken out of your account. I know Shohei probably blah, 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 blah. So of course he starts off with, I wanna give him the benefit of the doubt. In baseball, there is a bro code where you don't come after other teammates. There's a brotherhood in baseball. You don't do that. You don't do that, to quote Brody. But he's trying to make it seem like, uh, uh, but really AJ Pruszynski is now a podcaster. And when you're a podcaster, you have to link up with other losers and make them feel good about taking winners down. So it's like, I'm gonna be mean to losers and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be mean to the guy on top and I'm gonna stick up for losers and then I'll have a big fan base because most of the people listen to pod- podcasts are losers. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, <laughs> business, there's a good chance that you're a loser. So I'm very bothered by this. Um, I'm bothered by the culture of losers. I'm bothered by people taking Shohei down. Whether or not he was doing anything wrong, I don't think it matters. I think he's the face of baseball. And I do think there is a racial element to this. I know that I'm not someone who likes to pull the race card. It's not my thing. But there's generally a culture of coming at Asian people because Asian people will literally do nothing to defend themselves. Because Asians have hot wives, they've got a lot of Louis Vuitton at home, they're doctors, they're doing well for themselves, so when fucking loser white guys start mouthing off at them, or people are punching them on the subway in New York, nobody really cares because nobody sticks up for Asians. I'm gonna stick up for Asians right now, leave them alone, I love Asians, you guys are great doctors, you have great food, and for the most part, you're great tenants. Thirdly, it's okay to explicitly hate the Los Angeles Dodgers and really Los Angeles anything, Lakers, whatever. How do I put this? Every team spends a lot of money and everyone gets excited. The Padres spend hundreds of millions of dollars. Isn't this exciting? Every baseball journalist. The Mets spend hundreds of millions of dollars. Isn't this exciting? They're gonna have a competitive team. The Dodgers spend some money They're called villains. There's no objectivity from baseball journalists around the Dodgers because it's so acceptable to hate LA teams and I think it's BS. Because to be honest, the Padres spent a lot of money, nothing great that really happened. They didn't win a World Series. The Mets spent a lot of money, it was a joke. Nothing happened, they had to trade away people. It was was a joke. The Dodgers have a very, very well-run team. They're managed well. A lot of their players are from the minors. A lot of their players are players that other teams gave up on, and the Dodgers are such a great organization that they know how to make the best out of what other teams consider scraps because they don't know what they're doing. So that's my defense of Asians, Dodgers, and winners. I will not get any of you on my side. What I will only do is further isolate myself, but that's what I think. What do you think? Uh, I don't think Shohei knew. I really? think he's like an honorable Asian man and like he seems cool. Like if anything, he's completely fooling me at, like at worst, but I just don't buy it. I think his guy was shady. He lied about being a translator like for another foreign player like 12 years ago. The guy seems weird. And if Shohei has hundreds of millions of dollars, which he never looks at that account, accountants in Tokyo or whatever do. He will not see four and a half million dollars go away. I'm sorry these like fucking baseball players that are like shitting on him. They're always looking at the account because they've never had money before. But these guys in Japan have way more than you. Like like the, the endorsement deals are for a whole race, not your like shitty dealership in Cleveland. Like. No, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, like AJ Pruszynski, like he didn't make seven hundred million dollars. He never got like a big crazy contract. Dana White from UFC just came out and said that he forgot that he lost four million dollars at a blackjack table. Exactly. And that's again this loser culture. Like you have no idea what it's like to be that rich. And e- I'm not saying I do, but like I've had lunch with billionaires before. Like I think these fucking incel fucking losers and these like vengeful whatever baseball people they just don't understand what it means to have this much money like no concept no i i mean i know talent that is has way less money than a baseball player or any athlete i i know guys who are like oh i forgot i i had a check for a hundred thousand dollars on my couch i never cashed it from like a year ago like i've met people like that like money just becomes a number on your iphone at some point and that number can get so big that you won't even want to look at it because you know it's never going to go to zero so four and a half million dollars, fucking nothing to some of these guys. Show his Katsuya bill four and a half million. <laughs> um, yeah, I it's think race related too. 
I just think like so Dodger too. Stadium's race related. By the way, I don't know anyone. Is that a thing who's like, oh, you went to Dodger Stadium. Did you feel safe? Oh, for sure. Everyone's like, oh, I went to a Dodger game and a gangbanger, blah, blah. It's like, you're just racist, dude. Oh, is that like conservative TikTok or something? That's insane. Like, it's like, it seems to be like a beautiful, like, cultural thing, Dodger Stadium. Like, that's always been my impression of it. And I'm like, you know, I can be cynical. I'm not always looking for, like, the, the you know, the light in things. But still, like, Dodger Stadium's like a beacon in L.A., I agree. I think oftentimes people like line up Dodger fans with like Raider fans Mm. and it's just not the case. Like, yes, at one point there was a fight and a guy went into a coma because of whatever. But that's cool. I saw the billboard on Melrose. It was like, have you seen these guys? And it looked like three uh, Mexican guys from Grand Theft Auto. I was like Dodger Stadium. I was like, if you go and you might get killed, that's kind of sick. It's just not the case. I don't think anyone's going to dodge. I think also, like, I'm not someone who's into rivalries, but I've gone to San Francisco Giants games. Here? In San Francisco and here. There are a bunch of, like, Trevor White guys in boat shoes mouthing off. And, like, I'm not mouthing off to a 200-pound Mexican dude. Like, no, that's insanity. Like, what do you do? Like, and, and when I go to other places, like, I'm scared of getting my ass kicked. Like, everyone should be scared in someone else's stadium of getting their ass kicked. And if someone yells something at me and they're bigger and stronger than me, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. So I'm sorry some guy lost his life in the Dodger Stadium parking lot, but I also suspect that it might have been his fault. Sorry. Yeah, if you're in boat shoes mouthing off to, like, some, like, gangster Mexican dude, like, you're an idiot. You're like, an idiot. Get out of here. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. I don't think people realize how many uh, guys are strapped (laughs) over there. Yeah, and also not to mention I go to a lot of baseball stadiums in the country. Like, there are rowdier places. Like, Philadelphia people get drunk and fight. Southside Chicago, those people get drunk and fight. So to then paint L.A. people like we're fighters when the other stereotype is that we're all pussies eating quinoa sauce or whatever. Those like, places are disgusting. I just went to Philadelphia for the <laughs> first time last year, and I've been a couple times since. Absolutely disgusting. I'm like, when I showed up, I was like, this is America's version of, like, Moscow. You see, like, giant, like, eagle uh, statues and stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm in America right now. Everyone's like, oh, America's the Midwest. I'm like, no, it's not. It's the East Coast where you see all these people living like it's London in the 1700s. Like, guys, there's cobblestone on your streets. Are you fucking kidding me? I like that. I like the history in Philadelphia. Really? Yeah. Dude, I'm a patriot. You're a, but you're a man of the West. Yeah, but I love America. You do. I do. I love America. How do you feel like you've, I don't feel like I've ever lived in America. I'm from Texas and I've lived in California. Like when I went to the White House, I smoked weed outside of it because I was like, these motherfuckers think they can like tell us what to do. I live 3000 miles away. It's a joke. (laughs) I don't even have registration for my car. There's no cops out there anymore. It's awesome. I've never not driven in the HOV lane on the way to work. Yeah, but we're safe because because of the blood and war of Washington, D.C., we are safe. Mm. Putin can't fuck with us. North Korea can't fuck with us. China can't fuck with us. I mean, they're fucking with us in certain ways, but yeah. like, at the end of the day, the reason you can go eat avocado toast with some OnlyFans girl... Which I've literally done. ...is because of war and the war machine out of the East Coast. Okay, I get that. That's kind of sick. And all, here, all, all our, our Marines bases are over, and stuff. You know? you know, I watched like, maybe it was a mistake to click on it on YouTube. So my algorithm got messed up a little bit, I'm convinced. But I watched something like, oh, how like Russia would actually attack us. And it was just take out our nuclear arsenal in the West. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that's where they have to hit first. They can't hit our cities. And that made me feel better. Like they'll never go for LA first or New York first. I mean, but what if there's a whole crazy war where it's like China and Russia and they all come at once? I mean, are you really think you I fig- thought about that a couple of days ago. What would happen? <laughs> you think you figured out Putin's nuclear war because of a video you saw on Instagram? Yes, I'm a victim of uh, YouTube's algorithm. Okay, speaking of YouTube, I, this was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. There's a YouTuber, his name's Your Fellow Arab, <laughs> and he was taken hostage in Haiti because he went there to try to interview Barbecue, who's the head of that Haitian gang. And he's been taken hostage. He's been hostage for two weeks. This is one of the... Obviously, YouTubers do the dumbest shit in the world. And every other day, you see a video where it's like, YouTuber tries to give a crocodile Celsius, loses hand or something. <laughs> this is the dumbest shit in the entire world. He's hostage. He brought... Oh, my God, dude. He brought... A Haitian guy with him thinking that would keep him safe. 
Was probably, Are you serious? Oh my God. That's like Macklemore having Lil Wayne rap with him so he can feel good at rap. That's like having no money in your bank account, bad credit, no assets, and bringing a Jewish guy with you to help you finance a mansion and thinking it's gonna work out. He brought a Haitian with him. And so now, <laughs> now he's there. Ransom is $600,000 is what the Haitian gang people are asking for. This is also just like, how stupid are these people? He's already given them $40,000. Which is probably all he's got. But it's like, <laughs> are, are we financing a cloud sofa from Restoration Hardware? You're just gonna give them 40K? What, like, what are you, you're, you think you're getting goodwill? It's, uh, okay, so. <laughs> So he's also in communication. He's pulled the Arab card saying that the reason he hasn't been rescued is because he's Arab. But it's like, bro, there's Arab hostages in tunnels in Gaza. There's American hostages in the tunnels in Gaza. Mm -hmm. No one gives a fuck. You're not a WNBA player with a vape pen. You got to raise this money, which also I don't know why you've been keeping it secret for two weeks. It's like, make a GoFundMe. Have Qatar help your Arab ass. Like, what are you doing? His name's Barbecue? No, Barbecue is the name of the Haitian No, I know. Lord. That's insane. That's his name. Because they say he eats people. And this guy thought oh, he was going to go sick. interview him. <laughs> that's so cool. Jews, we don't go anywhere, dude. My dad's born in Morocco. I'm not fucking going to Morocco. Everyone's like, it's safe. It's not that bad. My last name is like Kikstein there. I'm not going to Morocco. <laughs> I won't even go to Cancun. People say those places are safe or whatever Mexican resort place. I'm not going. I don't feel safe there. I won't even go south of the 10. And you're going to Haiti? Would Haiti you go, go to Haiti? I would never go to Haiti. Would, I would you go to Mexico? Yeah, with my family who speaks all speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. They're from there. I would definitely go. I think I'm going this summer. But like, I would never go basically anywhere else. Like, I'm not into like, oh, let's go to Vietnam. Are you fucking kidding me? Where they had a war? No, never. Would you go, what if bad friends made you go somewhere dangerous? Would you go because it's your job? For the laughs, yeah. For the laughs? I would go for the laughs probably anywhere. So I guess that's a really good point, Benji. Bobby gets an in with Kim Jong-un and you're going to North Korea Dennis Rodman style. A you trillion going? percent would <laughs> shake his hand. But I'm also someone who I, who's like, oh, if like Trump walked in here, I'd shake his hand and have like a million laughs with him. Like, We're, I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> you're in a very Trump-friendly zone. We have Jesse who does Trump impressions online. <laughs> I voted for Trump. There, I said it. I don't care. And I was right. All you Jews who haven't been voting for Trump are idiots. Biden keeps giving money to Iran or whatever you want. Whatever he's doing. It ain't good. And I getting voted, us killed. <laughs> I voted for Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, you did? Yeah, just because it was funny. But, yeah, I would go to North Korea. for, But, like... In that VIP kind of style. So I just watched Beyond Utopia, this documentary about uh, defectors leaving. It's very sad. But, like, if I'm rolling in on, like, a private jet with smart waters, sure. If you came back with a North Korean wife, that'd be so baller. If, like, Kim Jong-un was like, you can take one. Oh, he'd probably give me one. Like, because I do sometimes get, like, if Bobby and Andrew don't, like, want something, they're like, oh, you can have these, you know? <laughs> you th like, like, they get, like, four hats. Like, two will be for Bob, one for Andrew. But then they'll be like, Carlos, you can have the fourth hat we didn't like that much. Uh, while we're bringing up sex trafficking, we should talk about Diddy. Uh, oh, yeah. So. I love uh, sex trafficking when it's, like, done, like, legally. When it's, like, just sex trafficked, like, an escort. Like, it's just a, you went through traffic, I guess, to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you're not against the hookers being stuck on the 101 and the 405. No, but, like, if you're, like, in a crate from Thailand, like, I'm against that, of course. Okay, so what about a sex worker who's <laughs> flying first but against their will? Are you, like, you're in first no, class, babe. I know, which is enticing, but if you, like, go to the bathroom on any airline, it's like, hey, if, like, you're, like, here against your will, like, press one or do something. But, like... So I'm against that, obviously. But on, on, if you're first class from, like, Moscow to LAX, that's an expensive flight, and you're probably going to go, like, you're probably going to be, like, a, a Melania or something. I think in a previous life you could have been a prostitute. Oh, like a gay one? No, a female. You oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you maybe, you maybe, you know, you seem to have a lot of it's a previous life. It's, like, the 70s. Oh, yeah. You're I like guess my previous life, so I was born in 87, would have just been like the 70s. 
Yeah, you could have died of AIDS in 86 and came back as Carlos Herrera in 87. Oh, that's so funny. Like, I was just some gay guy in the tenderloin. Again, why do you keep making yourself gay? I said because you're, you said I you're had a AIDS. hot female prostitute. Oh. Anyone can get AIDS. <laughs> Carl, okay, fine. You were a gay hooker, Carlos. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I would have cleaned up. Diddy apparently was paying Young Miami a monthly stipend. Young Miami of the City Girls, I am... Uh, horrified, I'm distraught because I thought Young Miami and I were in a monogamous relationship. <laughs> and <laughs> I know she did a lot of rapping about only caring about millionaire dick. And and I really thought it was a character study when Young Miami said, spoil me like my daddy and you can fuck me till I'm raspy. Mm. But apparently Young Miami's been cheating on me. She was helping him with pink cocaine. Have you ever seen pink cocaine? There's pink coke now? There's yeah. Barbie Coke now. I think it has like other stuff in it, like MDMA. Oh, these cucks. They just had to make liberal Coke. <laughs> it's actually cocaine for breast cancer. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the NFL breast cancer awareness week. But you would, if you were with Diddy partying and he brought out pink cocaine, you would know you're safe. We are all so lucky that I have no power and not hundreds of millions of dollars because there's no doubt in my mind that on all these Me Too arrests and everything that I would be in handcuffs. There's no doubt like, oh, buses showed up at three in the morning with girls speaking foreign accents. I would have been the guy texting the guy the address to the P. Diddy's place. Like, I, I love shit like this. I, I think, it's, I mean, I'm married now, but yeah, single me, I don't... Who is the person saying no to a P. Diddy party? Not to say, I don't know the details of whatever he was doing. Obviously, if there's anything like with underage girls going on, or I guess now they're saying underage boys, obviously none of that is okay. But on the surface, not knowing any of that, if people, if you get a FaceTime from a friend and they're doing pink cocaine with P. Diddy, you're going. A million percent. Same thing with Epstein. Oh, that's... If you, okay, so... You meet Epstein. You're at that fancy caviar restaurant but in New York. can we be together? Okay, me and you are yeah. in New York. We're eating a $300 baked potato covered in caviar, right? I don't I've, know if you've had one. They have those. Yeah, I've never had that. I've, I've had, had caviar, it. not that, though. That sounds awesome. There's some caviar restaurant. I think there's one here now, too. Anyways, they put okay. a bunch of caviar on the baked potato. Wow. You're there. We're hanging out. Epstein, let's say it's not now. We don't know everything we know about Epstein. Of course. It's 2015. Fun times. We're eating caviar baked potatoes. We pass by the comedy store. It says Joe Rogan. Yeah. yeah, Epstein sees us. He's like, those guys look cool. We start talking. We got Epstein in stitches. He's like, hey, why don't you come to my island with me? Yeah. Stephen Hawking's will be there. We start laughing, doing impressions of Stephen Hawking. He's he like, don't us. do that there, though. We're going. <laughs> Suddenly we're on a list and everyone's mad at us. Oh, I'd be annoyed. I'd be like, dude, I was at this place with Benji and this guy. Blame the Jew is what you do. <laughs> no, I'm I was just you, saying. The my... Jews made me do it. No, I would never blame the Jews. I want, you know, I want everyone to know, like, we were rolling together, though. Especially when we live in a culture of pretty much people do whatever rich people want. Like, I'm at a cool rich person's house. Look at all the photos. Or a rich person took me on vacation. Look at all the photos. It, it, it's not that hard to end up on Epstein's list. It's not that hard. Cuba Gooding Jr., you're a great actor. Now he's a villain because he's doing pink cocaine with Diddy. I mean, I don't know. He's sus, though. I know. Maybe he is. I just love Rod Tidwell from Jerry Maguire. I know. I rewatched that this year. But he's a little sus. I guess. All right. You're right. Okay. Who else is, I mean, was Bruce Willis on the list? Again. He was a real, like, you know. I just want my heroes to stay my heroes sometimes. They and, can and stay it, my heroes. If Bruce Willis went to Epstein Island, wait. Oh, Leo went? See, of course Leo went. Yeah, I just think life is tricky, and when a billionaire invites you to do stuff, you usually go. I've, again, I've hung out, and I've gone on cool, vac I've gone to cool places with really rich people. Yeah. And I know most of the people who are obsessed with Epstein and now obsessed with Diddy haven't really done a lot of fun, cool stuff with rich people. Just like the Shohei stuff. Just like the it's Shohei like stuff. not being educated. I want to bring up some more rich people. Mm-hmm. Carly Kloss, she's like a model, you know her? Mm-mm. She's like a famous model. Okay. She's married to Jared Kushner's brother. Okay. They're bringing back Life Magazine. Oh, now, very nice. This is peak rich. When you are so rich that you can be like, I'm starting a magazine company and everything's going to work out. Just a vanity business. That's how you know you're loaded. And you really know you're loaded? If you're like a Jewish guy who's taller than 5'10 and you're sort of like a, a sort of ugly Paul Rudd, the world is your oyster. 
You can walk into CAA, you can walk into Netflix, you're gonna have a job, you can start a magazine company, you can say I sell fax machines now and the world will work out for you. I've seen it time and time again. You just walk in there and you say, hi, my name's Kike Kikestein. I have a model wife because of my kike height. I'm a tall Jew, which makes me a unicorn. I gotta stop saying kike so much, but I think, <laughs> I think you get it. Uh, They're joshies. joshies. That's a term I heard Will Arnett had for Jewish people, joshies. Oh. Yeah. Like they're all named Josh and they're all that's what their mom calls them. Hey you little Joshy. Yeah. Right. So he instead of saying kike, he would say Joshy. This is what it looks like for a Jew to learn a new slur. <laughs> oh. We should put <laughs> we should put that in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, Joshy. I all, to be honest, I kind of always resented those guys because I'm like the short Jew. Who had mm. to do like open mics? I wasn't like the Jew who was like, my parents went to college. I went to Northwestern. Yeah. Now that... I have an awesome job and I and I act like I'm funny in meetings, even though I've never done an open mic in my life. Those like, are all like Sandy's friends from, yeah, from Michigan. They're I can't all... stand you guys. I can't stand those fucking Jews. You've done nothing with your life. You have rich parents and now you got a great job because you're a Jew and they went to college and then you went to a good college. They have it too good. You have it too good. I like blue collar Jews or like gritty Jews. Mm -hmm. Those are the the good Brody. ones. Brody, Brody. Um, <laughs> I guess that's it. Those yeah, are no, just uh, Brody. I just don't like those kinds of Jews. All right, speaking of Jews, let's talk about landlords. Mm. Landlords are suing New York City. The landlords of, of Versace and Harry Winston uh, retail store in New York City. They are suing New York City because the taxes are too high. I don't know if you guys know anything about commercial real estate. You probably don't. The price of the property is mostly based off of how much income it makes. It's called a cap rate. Look it up, you fucking goys. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the city is taxing them based off of how much these properties used to make pre-pandemic rates. And in landlord talk, pre-pandemic rates mean back when you couldn't set buildings on fire and everyone applauded and called it... Uh, something good we didn't mm. that was before the mayor would kneel down in front of a burning lululemon and say i swear i'm not racist that's what <laughs> that's what pre-pandemic means that's when you couldn't go into a made well and steal shirts and and vomit on stuff and piss on everything that's not the world we live in anymore so i don't think it's fair because nowadays we don't even have cops if you're watching the show and you are six years old or younger Cops are these people who used to protect you if you were getting raped or beaten up or someone was trying to steal your Rolex. Now we don't have them. Commercial real estate is in trouble. And so the world has changed. And so these retail uh, stores can't charge as much rent. It's almost cut in half in some of these situations. And it's not fair to charge landlords this much. I know there's probably some commies out there who think landlords are the worst thing on the fucking planet. As a landlord or someone who comes from landlords, actually, you know what, I am a full-blown landlord. Let me tell you, landlords are the good guys. People are the shitholes. That's why you need to charge people security deposits if you rent them apartments. That's why you need to do a hold on someone's credit card if they're renting a car or getting a hotel room. You can't even fill up your fucking gas tank anymore without them putting a hold on your fucking credit card. And it's because that's how rotten people are. It's not landlords. And so what's gonna happen now is if, if they force all these landlords to pay these crazy taxes that have nothing to do with the actual price of the property, and I also find it ironic that you will uh, charge uh, Donald Trump half a billion dollars for saying some property's worth more than it is and then it, it, it all works out, but New York City can do it to these people when it actually makes no sense. My point is, is landlords are the good guys. We get a bad rap, landlords get a bad rap, but we are the good guys. And what's gonna happen is if they can't pay taxes, the government is gonna seize these properties. And eventually, you'll see it happen with all your apartment buildings too because of all the rent control and, oh, I'm a, I'm a, a Filipino trans person with AIDS, you can't charge me rent. <laughs> these landlords need to make money. And you can't even insure a lot of these apartment buildings anymore because the insurance companies don't want anything to do with it. So these apartment buildings, these retail stores, they're gonna end up in the hands of the bank. 
They're going to end up in the hands of the government, and then you'll really see what a shitty landlord is when the government owns your building. You got to go to the DMV, you wait in a three hour line. So next time your toilet's overflowed and you got to call the city of LA, it's going to take nine fucking hours. The neighbor's cat is meowing too loud, or they're playing My Chemical Romance at 4 a.m. too loudly. Who are you going to call? Wells Fargo? Have you called Wells Fargo before? It's not so good. So maybe, again, you guys are a bunch of fucking losers a bunch of fucking pinko commies. Landlords are the good guys. You're the resentful idiots, and you should be so lucky to have nice Jewish landlords like me. So stop being whiny tenants. It's all good. We're, pretty soon we're not gonna have a Harry Winston store anywhere. If they don't start lowering taxes, you're gonna have to go to a red state to buy a Louis, you're gonna have to go to Mississippi to buy a Louis Vuitton bag if you fucking commie blue mares keep this up. Sorry. Is this going to uh, happen ahead of the election, you think? Taxes are going to go up in uh, states where there were previous rioting? I mean, there are, they're, they're increasing taxes all the time. I mean, in L.A., they just came out with that new mansion tax where they increase taxes on mm -hmm. all houses worth over $5 million. The issue with this is, on like a retail property, the property's value is based off how much money it makes. Uh -huh. So a house just gets its value. It's not an investment property. Yeah. But these types of property... What, what it's considered to be is based off how much rent it makes, and then they have a way of saying, okay, the market rent is this, it makes this, this is what the building's worth based off the square footage and the blah, blah. But because they're charging them based off rents they used to get four years ago before everything was put on fire, mm -hmm. they can't afford it. Exactly. So they used to make $15 million a year, now they're making $8 million a year, mm -hmm. and the taxes are whatever, and then that's why this whole city is starting to look like shit because it's just too expensive to manage property. Actually, I mean, one of the reasons. I thought of that on the way here because I saw Celebrity Cleaners on Hillhurst and it used to be on La Cienega and I was like, everything in LA moves around. All our favorite restaurants closed? They all move around, if anything. Like one day like Swingers won't be there. It'll be something else and Swingers will have moved to a cheaper location farther away. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough for property owners. I don't know what to tell you. Do you own property yet? No. Why not? So I don't have enough money. You don't? No. I feel like you should be rich by now. I mean, I have stuff saved right now, and I I, I want to save my money to get what I want. That's Are you buying stocks? Say. No. No? No. You should buy maybe some stocks. I mean, I need, like, Jewish help with that. I can help you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, why don't we open up um, a Charles Schwab account for you? Okay. Like, th yeah, see, I need, like, this is why I need Jewish friends. Do you, do you, are you not surrounded by Jews anymore? Well, Santino's Catholic and Bobby's uh, uh, Asian. You're surrounded by tenants. Yeah, exactly. So, Koreans and Irish. And yeah, my other coworkers. All my friends are Korean and Irish, and I don't own a home. Yeah. In Spain, my coworkers from Spain. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. The Sp the Sp some of the Spanish people have money. I was just at the Pendry. I go there for breakfast before the podcast mm -hmm. to. Get my thoughts together. Yeah. It's often like very attractive, rich looking people speaking Spanish. I love that. Uh, I, I was gonna say my coworker who's Spanish, he's very fancy. Like he's like all he's very like well put together. I think I prefer the like Spanish rich to like the French rich or the Italian rich. There's something about the Spanish rich person that just feels a little more like hello. Because the French rich person is like undressed fancy and blah, blah. And then the Italian rich person is like a little serious. It's like, whoa, bro, I'm in pajamas in public and you're in like an $8,000 suit. Like, it's too much. And the French one, it's like, okay, like your luxury items don't even cost as much here. So it's like you can't even compare it. It's like your Louis Vuitton is like 30% off basically. Everyone could have that here. Yeah. That's what I would say if I was there. I've never been to France. St. Bart's, too. You can get good deals on that stuff. Really? You go to the Hermes store in St. Bart's? I mean, I would go. I, you know, what did I want from Hermes? Oh, ear cuff. I was thinking about getting an ear cuff just to be weird. Is that like an earring? I don't know. Yeah, like an earring without the commitment of like piercing your ear. Like you, That's a thing people do? Yeah, ear cuff. Ear cuff? Yeah, like, can you look up a uh, Gucci ear cuff? It would be like that. Exactly. That's like what, the kind of one I would want. I don't do designer clothes, and to be honest, I usually just think it's tacky, but mm -hmm. I think Hermes is the only company of the fancy stuff where I actually look and I'm like, oh, this shit's nice. That's like a next level, like, rich person place to it's, me. It's not heavily labeled. 
Like yeah. Gucci is like you got a giant G see, and then this the is Chanel what I, a giant C. See the Gucci right here? I I think it's funny. Oh, I didn't notice. I think it's funny. You brought two pairs of Gucci sunglasses here? Yeah, of course. So I wanted to test out which one's better on camera. Dude, you need some Jewish friends. I know. <laughs> you don't need two Gucci sunglasses that look exactly the same. They don't. And one has Gucci up here and one doesn't say it. Okay, listen. It me. only says it on the side. I've had this talk with people who don't know what they're doing. And I know it's going to be an uphill battle. Do you think you can open up a Charles Schwab account on your own? Or do you need me to like meet up with you and help you do it? No, I can do it on my own. I'll so, just have an assistant do it. But they can help me. Okay, so I need you to open a Charles Schwab account. Yeah. And whatever you're comfortable. We're already halfway there. Charles is my name in English. And then I want you to just put some money into it. Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Instead of buying... Next time you get the urge to buy a third pair of Gucci sunglasses, just take that money and throw it in there. And then call me and I'll tell you what to do. Okay. And I'm not like going to tell you to do risky stuff. It'll all just be normal, smart stuff. Yeah. Okay. Can we, in, is there, a, I've always wanted to invest in like shady stuff. Yeah. Okay. You see, again, I'm no, okay. stop it. We're not doing that. We're opening up a Charles Schwab account, mm -hmm. and we're going to invest in, like, an index fund and maybe some Apple. It'll just be very normal stuff. We're not doing Low risky risk. stuff. I've, you know what's funny is I, I thought, like, oh, I could invest in, like, a kilo of Coke. <laughs> see, you, <laughs> and, like, see what happens with that. I, I feel like uh, – what's it called when you, people get sober but they still have, like, bad behavior? Oh, dry drunk. That yeah. was me. Yeah, like, yeah. I need you to start. I, I think a second pair of Gucci sunglasses has a little bit of that. Oh, yeah. I do that all the time. Like, I get obsessed with things. Like, I couldn't stop buying Yeezys a couple of years ago. Okay. I had a tower of Yeezys. I, w I would call it the Twin Towers because it was, like, too, like... We're opening up a Charles Schwab account. We're, we're done buying anti-Semite slides. Yeah, I mean, I buy... <laughs> yeah. Wait, this is coming from a guy with a nice car, though. I don't have a nice car. I have a Tesla Model 3. Oh, I thought you had, a, like, the fancy one. No. Oh. I have nothing. I'm doing... I, I'm doing um, I don't have a nice car. I have a Tesla Model 3. <laughs> it's trash. It's, like, four years old. Does... Okay, are there issues with it? No, that's the problem. Oh. <laughs> I wish there was, so I would... my I would be pressured, but I have this kike backbone that can't get rid of it because it's still functional. I leased a Mercedes this summer, too. Oh, congrats. What kind? A C300. Oh, that's nice. You like it? Yeah, it's fine. I think I want to get some. I want. I, I think I want like a Forerunner. I think that's my next car. Oh, that's cool. I, Range Rover is gonna be my next one. I want like the low end SUV. I have no money. I can't own a home. I have a tower of Yeezys, and I want a Range Rover. I just got a Mercedes. <laughs> this is why everyone thinks that that Jews are like, some conspiracy. You want to hear the conspiracy? We don't have a Yeezy tower. <laughs> We don't want to get Range Rovers and Mercedes. I'm I'm driving a five year old Tesla like a fucking schlep. But if I was the same as you, this wouldn't be as fun. Like we have to have different kinds of friends. Okay, but save a little bit of money. You could have been putting three hundred dollars into a Charles Schwab account every month for the last three years, oh, and you would yeah. have that would be worth thirty thousand. Really? Yeah. See, I need to learn these things. Yeah. I went to private school in Houston. There were no Jews at my school. I was the dumbest Jew in Jewish private school. I was the dumbest. All my friends are doing way better than I'm doing right now. Look I was at me. the I'm dumbest a, Catholic. I'm wearing a Nolan Ryan jersey from eBay. Mm -hmm. I have 80 listeners on my podcast. What up? I'm the, <laughs> I'm the dumbest one. Benji, I feel like you have a great life. You I do. You could be in North Korea. Getting a chick. <laughs> That's so badass. Because there's no North Korean women here. That if you were the one guy who was like... It would be rare. It'd be like having the Travis Scott Nikes or something. Check out my silent North Korean wife. She never talks back. <laughs> I don't think there's a woman less likely to talk back than a North Korean bride, right? Even like the Romanian ones who know how to act. No, but if, you go, if she saw anything like an American flag or something, it might get her going. Triggers and then yeah. she like, go, like starts killing people. They said there's no word for American in North Korea. It's American bastard. Oh, really? It's just fascinating. Yeah. They think Dude. we're all rapists. Imagine, imagine the hot wife sex you would have with your North Korean bride. Fuck me, you American bastard. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah. What do you guys think? You're Filipino. What do you guys think about North Koreans? They don't like them. Do you have Asians you guys like less? Who's the who? Who are Filipinos' least favorite Asian? 
The Japanese. Yeah, because they dominated everyone back oh. in the day. Like the Koreans hate the Japanese. Uh huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. The Japanese are kind of the coolest, though, right? That's why. Do you still have some resentments to Japanese people because of your racist upbringing? Do you still have resentments towards Japanese people because of your racist upbringing? No. No? Okay. Were you raised racist? No, not at all. No? No, if anything, well, if anything, my dad was like, I don't, we're not going to go back to Mexico for a long time. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to be very, like, Texan, like, grow up there. He was trying to, like, whitewash you. Yeah, I think that was very common in the 80s and 90s. I think I had that, too, because my dad's Moroccan, and I think there's obviously certain things when you have a four, like, he didn't take me to baseball games, but I think there were elements yeah. of try to be, a, but I went to Jewish school and stuff. He didn't. I think the Jew stuff they kept alive, but we embraced the American stuff. Also, I think foreigners, especially back then, they'd come to America and they'd be like, look at the size of these cheeseburgers. Yeah, they, they like, liked it here. Yeah, why wouldn't you? You come from another place, you see like freeways and the lights turn on and the water's good. It's like, oh, everything's fine. Fuck so, where I came from. So tell me about your new podcast you're doing. Out of Bad? Oh, it's with Mia Malkova. She's an OnlyFans girl? She's an adult actress sorry i'm sorry cut that out cut actually, it out she's an adult adult professional no actually she is an only fans uh girl as well she's like one okay. of i think she makes like a million a month or something it's something insane she's like oh, top wow. five yeah it's crazy does then, she own a home yeah she okay, owned a, yeah she we were talking about how she got a castle in oregon like lost a million dollars and sold it she was like fuck this too much upkeep to have a castle in portland oh my god She's got a sick house in the hills. And why then don't, Gab why don't you guys have a Jew around? I know. Well, we do. Gabby Epstein, the Tony model. Tony has a Jewish guy helping him. What's his name? Yuri? I don't know. Yeah. Italians know you need a Jew around. Oh, yeah. Tony's Italian. Yeah. I just classify him as white trash. <laughs> I know. Tony's, like, he calls himself Italian. He doesn't look Italian to me. He doesn't look like Al Pacino. Well, there's different types. I think the, the northern Italians are, are lighter. And the darker ones are from closer to Sicily and Mediterranean. I like the darker Africa. ones more. Yeah? Yeah. I like the darker Italians. Although I follow a lot of, like, white Italian <laughs> girls. You Simone hear that, Coppola. Italians? He's got his preferences. Yeah. I don't want the ones up north who, like, it's like the food's not as good. I want, like, coastal, like, seafood, like, with pasta, the sun, sunglasses, you know, tan, <laughs> like... And so it's you and this only uh, adult actress? Me, yeah, it was me, Ma Mia, Malko Mia Malkova and Gabby Epstein, uh, an Australian model who's also an OnlyFans girl. That's fun. I feel like we're similar in that you do well with, like, female energy. I'm good with females. Yeah, we're not, like, We a have threat. female friends and... Yeah, although they're, <laughs> it's so funny because I've been thinking about that lately because there's people I'll see with female friends and I'm like, you little... Gay bitch. <laughs> you little, you're such a little loser. You know you want to fuck them. I kind of like turned on that. Like I changed over time, not like in an incel way, but more just like, oh, my intentions are clear now. Like I don't need like female friends. Like I went on a couple of dates with this girl recently and she was like, we should be friends. I was like, yeah, I want to be friends with a 23 year old girl. That sounds like a fucking fun time. I think when you're younger as a man, it's easier to have female friends because like everything's a fun, silly adventure. And then as you get older, you just don't necessarily have the space for female friends anymore. Yeah, but when you're younger in LA too, when I was in my 20s, like you're a loser in this city. You're a loser in America. You have no money, you have no prospects, unless you're Gerard Carmichael and you make a million dollars when you're 27, you're fucking nobody. Like, so of course, like you can't just like tell half the population like to go fuck themselves. Of course, and like I liked my friends that were girls, like Esther Pavitsky, Stephanie Simbari, people like that. It was you know, it was a good time. Yeah, those were my female friends too. Exactly. Um, I also think maybe when you're young, your time isn't as valuable. So whatever tangent a female friend can send you on, you're just like, all right, I've got, I've got the next three months open. Sure, let's listen to you cry about a guy you were fucking for three months. Oh, God, that happened to me after I went, I, I came back from Long Beach. I, we had a show out there. It's like 1230. This like hot Italian girl hits me up that I have been dating a little bit. And I pick her up. She's like, like, I'm going through something. And I'm like, OK, like, I'll get you. It's 1230, whatever. She gets into my car like 20 minutes after I, I roll up to her place. Eyes rolling to the back from ketamine. 
and like just complaining to me about her life. And I'm like, you know what? I think the days of me being a therapist are fucking done. Like that is so done. I don't give a fuck. I do miss so, all my female. I miss having, cause now that I'm married, I don't have any room for female friends pretty much. Like I'm still like friendly with my female friends, but like, it's not quite like it. It's yeah. just, there's only so much room for it. You can't have four uh, cocktails at, uh, you know, Craig's with your female friends and you got a wife at home. I also think in my twenties I was kind of slutty. Oh, you were? I think we you I think we all were. We were down to like fuck at any point. Like yeah, we were, I guess that's true. We're yeah. pretty loose, Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could black everything out. <laughs> Anyways, so then it's easier I guess to you have would like, fuck anyone. Yeah. Yeah, I would fuck anybody pretty much in mm-hmm. my twenties. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but um, <laughs> so then when you have female slut friends, it's like you have a lot in common because it's like who'd you just fuck? Who'd I just fuck? It's like Seinfeld, but a dirtier, rattier version mm-hmm. that we had here. Yeah. We were LA freaks, you know, I had a similar conversation with an East Coast comic, and Mm -hmm. I was sort of speaking freely like this, and he's like, you guys are LA freaks. And I'm like, what, like, you don't have any like female friends that are like dirty sluts? And he's like, no, of course not. What? Yeah, and I was just like, oh, like, well, what's wrong with like, do you hate women or something? He's like, no, like, come on, man, like, blah, blah, like who? And then he was sort of saying the other stuff we're saying, but like in a more aggressive way, and then I was like, oh, like, Maybe you like hate women or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, these New York com. Yeah, like go put on your backpack and walk a mile, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, idiot. New y- male New York comics. I don't think they have female friends. I think that's why they're so good at comedy because they're not <laughs> doing anything else except for comedy. Those guys are fucking funny. Like, but their life sucks. Like, I went to New York two weeks ago. I was like, I can't wait to get the fuck out of here. New York is the worst cockroach rat people. But it's also like. Like traffic for no reason. I I've never taken I've taken the subway like ten years ago. I only take Ubers in New York, and I don't know. You have to walk everywhere. You know, like if you have a job, you shouldn't have to walk. I'm sorry. Get in your fucking car. New York is just a rat place with the walking and the subways and the rudeness and the people. And then I used to think, well, well, I get it, but like if you're super rich and live in New York, then it's cool because your lifestyle. But then it's like everyone I know who's super rich in New York vacations six months a year. And then they're like, I represent New York. And it's like, oh, you do? Then why do you have two other houses and go to Europe for two months in the summer? It's like, you're not representing New York. Like, you want to go there and talk to other rich people who live there a few months a year. Like, you don't really like it there. Otherwise, you wouldn't escape constantly. I'm not into the grind. Everyone's, like, oh, all about the grind in New York. I get up early, and I, like, stay out till 4 in the morning. Like, I get up at 10 o'clock, and I have a job. It's fine. What's the name of your podcast with these girls? Out of Bed. Out of Bed? Yeah. And how's it going? How many episodes do you have? We have six out right now, mm-hmm. or seven out. It's going well. Uh, we've had Bobby on, Trevor Wallace, Harlan Williams. It's, you know, I, I like the solo episodes, just getting to know the girls. Um, it's been a fun time. I really connect with them. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I was put on the show. I didn't, like, like pitch it with them or anything. And, uh, yeah, they're really fucking funny. Well, let them know that I think in a previous life you were a fast-moving gal. I'm going to let them know that. I think you may have been. What do you think I was in a previous life? Oh, gosh. I think you were like someone at the at the school in Boyle Heights. Oh, with Roosevelt like your grandma. High? Yeah, with your grandma. You were just some goofy Mexican guy there. I think you were a Mexican in the east side. An east side Mexican? Yeah. Okay. You're very L.A. I love that about L.A., the mix of Jews and Mexicans. I think it's a beautiful thing. I know, but now there's this thing in Boyle Heights where a lot of the Mexicans are like, stop gentrifying, blah, blah. Like, there's, like, an aggressive pushback on the gentrification of the east side. But like Bound for to me, happen. What? Yeah, but then I'm just like, hey, know your history. This There used to be a lot of Jews and Asians, and this mm-hmm. wasn't just, like, a Mexican place. Same with Highland Park. Like, my grandfa- my great-grandfather lived in Highland Park, and there's, like, pushback there about gentrification, and I'm just like... Okay. I moved to Los Feliz. I'm out of West Hollywood. Oh, you did? We have a vacancy at our Los Feliz building. Oh, really? Remember I where Sadie used it. to live? Yeah. Yeah, there's an empty unit. Oh, nice. I'm but on... it's kind of, you know, it's not what it used to be. I have a, I'm in a duplex. Oh, nice. I love it. You have parking? Oh, yeah. Washer dryer? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, with a deck, everything. I love it. I need you to start saving money. I think I, I can save money because I don't need anything. Like, I, I look for things to buy. Like, I go to cottoncitizen.com, and I just, it's like that, have you been there? It's on Melrose Place. 
It's no. so great. This is what you need to do. You open up your Charles Schwab account, uh-huh. and then every time you're about to buy something you know that you kind of don't need and it's impulsive, also put a little money. All right, fine. I'm going to buy this pair of anti-Semite shoes, mm-hmm. but then I'm going to make myself put 100 bucks in my Charles Schwab account. Okay. Did you see uh, Ye Instagrammed yesterday, like, another rant? Do you, like, what's your, like, do you think he's an anti-Semite? Like, are 100%, you, yeah. So you don't like Kanye? Of course not, no. Okay. Why would I? Because music's good. <laughs> yeah, but I'm Jewish, and he, like, is an anti-Semite, and, like, there's all this anti-Semitism going on, and, like, people want, want us it, dead. And so that's lies. something I want to talk to you about. Oh, okay, go. People hate Jews now. It's yeah. crazy. I, I mean, people have hated Jews, like, uh, since, like, you know, Adam and Eve were around. <laughs> 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 but, like, now it's, like... It's it's mainstream, mainstream. Yes, it's mainstream to hate Jews. And it's not mainstream to hate anyone else, just Jews. But that's crazy. I never thought I'd see this fucking day. It to, it was an adjustment for me. I, I was naive myself. I was talking to a black comic in Phoenix, and, and he asked me about it, and I was explaining to him how, like, I didn't... You know, I always kind of knew it, but I didn't realize it, and he looks at me and he goes, you're having what black people call a Negro wake-up call. <laughs> So now I keep saying that in my head where it's like I had a wake up call. I didn't real like I knew people didn't like Jews, but now it's like, oh, people like really, really don't like Jews and Sounds like a Jordan Peele movie. It's a lot. But you know what? Like you said, I have a good life. I think ultimately the IDF is gonna do what they gotta do. You know, they're mm-hmm. obviously it's terrible that there's Jews, Americans, and Arabs being held hostage as people of all backgrounds and nobody cares. Um, but at the end of the day, Israel's a strong military, a strong economy. They're going to be able to do what they have to do, whether or not the United States helps or not. Most of the people who do hate Jews are losers. There aren't a lot of people like- A million percent A lot of the- Yeah. (laughs) And I think in the case of Kanye, I think there's a little bit of black supremacy there. Like Mm. the way he makes his wife dress up like naked. I'm kind of down for that. Black supremacy is like cool. Like- No, I don't. Any sort of any of that is racist. Any supremacy? No, it's all racism. I'm not cool with racism. I, I know, end but of like, story. but like, making black people like this like cool thing like black supremacy it sounds like you just like you're speaking Wakandan or something. It sounds like it, and it does sound cool. I'm not against like black pride or like yeah. or any of that. Like, I think black people are awesome. I love fucking black people. They're yeah. my favorite. Um, maybe not my favorite, but they're up there. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I think it goes black, Jap. Mm. This is a three way tie. Oh, I, I got to put it's black, Japanese, Mexican, and Jews. And somewhere in there is a perfect order. I would have to go. I'm pretty sure Mexicans are my favorite. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to go. All right. Are we doing an individual or in groups? What do you mean, like tiers of race? Like elite tier? There's a difference between one black person and many black people, or one Mexican and many Mexicans. We're doing the group. The group, Mexican's definitely number one. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna be surrounded by any race, I'm probably going Mexicans or, yeah, Mexicans. That would be a fun time. There'd be cake. I'd say whites are close, but then I'm gonna maybe feel weird, whereas I think Mexicans are always open to some, like, I'm not gonna walk around with a bunch of Mexicans and feel out of place, whereas, like when I went to U of A, I, there were a lot of whites there. I did feel a little out of place. Mm. Yeah, they would be like down there with like, um, you know, like some like cavemen or something. Yeah. Like Ohio whites. Like rat, cavemen, Ohio whites. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say Mexicans are my favorite. That's cool. Also, I think just from being from Los Angeles. Asians are good too, but. I saw a homeless Asian guy outside. It's insane. Insane. That's how bad things are getting. Yeah. There's, I mean, that's like the cra- I That is so rare. I should have touched them. Maybe I would have got powers or something. It was like some rare thing in the Matrix. It was crazy. I was with my nephew the other day. He's nine years old, and we see this crazy, like, mentally ill schizophrenic guy. Uh-huh. He's on Alvarado Street, which is like all this bustling people, right? Oh, headed to the game? No. Oh, yeah, we're headed to the game. Yeah. And he, um, he's literally standing naked. And he's wrapping, he's holding a foam mattress, like a towel, like a woman. Mm-hmm. And he's just standing there. And anyways, I accidentally used the word schizophrenic in front of my nine-year-old nephew. And then he was like, what's that mean? And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, I, so, oh. Now I got to explain what a schizophrenic is to my nine-year-old nephew. But yeah, then, that's kind of annoying. Are you an uncle yet? 
Yeah, I am. Do you ever say something and then realize like, oh, I wasn't supposed to say that in front of a child? Like, yeah, he doesn't say know like, any gay, fuck, bitch, twat. Yeah, all the time on accident. I'm like, you should oh. have your own podcast and call it Bad Uncle. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, it's like uh, because he likes he likes sports on the TV. He'll go golf or basketball, and I'll go like, "Oh, look, black people, you like them." And my sister can as will get mad at that. What do you think about anti-Semitism? You say you like Jews, and suddenly everyone hates Jews. Do you ever stick up for Jews, or like what's yeah, your? Yeah, I do. I do. I um, the way I stick up for Jews is I'll go on a date with like a Gen Z girl, and I'll say like like fuck Palestine and see oh, what happens. Okay. That's literally what I've been doing. <laughs> And what, did they get upset or something? Some do, some don't, but I think they should level the fucking place. I think it's insane. After World War II, like, you think that Jews aren't going to do everything to defend themselves? The It was never again. Like, they're never going to let that shit happen again. Like, they're going to fuck with you. Don't fuck with them. Like, level it. Thanks. I'm on the level it, too. Yeah. Jesse, I, you, you say level it, right? Thanks, dude. Yeah. I feel so supported right now. No, I mean, like... Yeah, fuck that. It, and the, I like um, the Hamas leaders being invited to Moscow and stuff. It's a it's a place for Russian military. Right. Like it, it's just shady as fuck. Fuck them. Well, thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Just so you know, if if you do end up fucking an anti-Semitic Gen Z girl, I, I still support you. And thanks. I know you still I, love me. I know that you would be OK with that because it, that's bound to happen. But um. I mean, I feel like Jews, Mexicans, it's like, you know, the the meme of two hands coming together, like and coming from Texas to California all along the border. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Like they're also I've said this a million times. Jews were the first people I ever met in my life who weren't like, your name's Carlos. Like it was like whatever. Mm -hmm. They're like used to it. And I want to close the borders except for Mexicans. My take is any Mexican can come in unless they have face tats. No, like Africans. Like that's so. No, some Africans. Kenyans and Nigerians for sure. Everyone else might have to pass some sort of test. Okay. Cool. Kenyans and Nigerians are A plus people. Because they're ones, your trainer. And they always win the LA Marathon. No, like the average Nigerian is more like educated and wealthy than the average white person. I know they're all like Catholics. You know, I they're grew good up in Christian Nigerians. people, the Kenyans and the Nigerians. I like Christians. They wear crazy outfits to church. It was funny. Yeah. You see like my friend Hugo's mom wearing like some crazy gown with like, you know, every color. <laughs> like Nothing against people from the Congo. Are people from the Congo or is it all just monkeys? Oh <laughs> my God. What do they do in the Congo? What do you mean? <laughs> it's a country. Yeah, I know. But like, is there like a bathroom? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's a bathroom. I'm pretty sure it's like, that's you just, know, a, hey, who that's not the, the Congo. That's a Black Lives Matter rally. How dare you? Who was the, <laughs> who was the, the, the black waitress at the store who would always grab your dick? She would uh, just grab everyone's dick all the time. Oh, she was from yeah. the Congo. She was from there? Yeah. That's insane. So to me, if you're from the Congo, it's like. You were born in the tree or something. Oh like, my God. I didn't know they had an, they have an embassy. I'm sure they do. I don't know a lot about the Congo either, but I'm not gonna assume they all live in trees, Carlos, Jesus. Look, there's a building in the Congo. It's AI. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe. All right, guys, apologies to the Congo. I love you, Carlos. Thanks so much for being here. Did you have fun? Yeah, I had a blast. All Thanks right, for sweet. having me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. This is do you fun. wanna promote anything? Uh, bad friends every Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific and out of bed every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific. I hope you, you think you'll get a bunch of hate speech for saying level Palestine and Congo's full of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just quoting literally what you said. Will there be any bad friends Reddit backlash? Oh, there. I mean, there's a million backlashes. I mean, if you say anything like sexual on a podcast, like, I'll say, like, oh, I've seen an escort before. People are like, he's disgusting. He's gross. Right. It's so lame. It's like all these losers, like, talking about, like, my sex life that I'll talk about, but, like, putting it down, I get slut-shamed. I love you. I love you, too. I would never slut-shame you. Thank you. I think you're a great a great slut. Or you, it sounds like you're getting older and you're not as slutty as you used to be. Yeah, that's true. And you were there during my divorce. That was fun. And you know what? I think it's good to look back on your 20s and your 30s and, like, say you had fun. A lot of guys, like, never had that. And then when they get married, they cheat on their wives because they've, like, 
never been in their Mercedes with a hot 25 year old anti-Semite and you yeah. have and so when you are ready to like settle down and meet a nice girl and take Viagra and testosterone and fuck your fat wife like mm -hmm. you'll be ready I'll also know how to cheat too yes yeah super important to know how to cheat otherwise you'll really hurt your wife's feelings yeah you have to know how it's just rude to get caught <laughs> super rude <laughs> all right I love you dude all right